Hey, the Slack is back. All right, how y'all doing? Sorry for my absence. Sorry, very sorry. I've been extremely busy launching a new walkthrough on my other Skyrim dedicated channel, Major Slack Attack. If you're into Skyrim and you want to see an excellent Necromage Vampire walkthrough, go check it out. The link to my other channel is on my homepage, homepage here in the right sidebar. Uh, once again, that's Major Slack Attack. Okay, enough about that. Borderlands now has my undivided attention. Oh, I see that. Yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, once again, sorry about my absence. This walkthrough that I'm about to do is a personal project that I've been working on lately. It has two main goals. One is to create a Mordecai Pistolero build, and the other is to do all the DLCs in Playthrough 1, but at the same time solve the DLC leveling problem. Now, this DLC leveling problem and why I'm apparently repeating some stuff in this walkthrough is going to require a rather lengthy explanation. And later on in this video, we'll be grinding through what I like to call a million dollar power start. So I'll explain everything during that grind. This will save you having to endure a lengthy introduction right now and allow us to get underway right away. For now, if you want to follow this walkthrough, you need to have the Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced version installed, otherwise known as Borderlands Remastered, and you need to select Mordecai as your character and just keep reloading a new game as Mordecai until you get the Violence Gearbox Legendary Revolver in your inventory at the start of the game. You have a 1 in 6 chance of getting this to happen, so it shouldn't take too long. Got the revolver? Good. Let's get busy. Ice is fully functioning. This way, please. Okay, all you need to know now is we're only going to be using pistols. Pistols, repeaters, and revolvers. And I'll explain why when, we, when I get to the uh, explanation later on. Step right up. This is the new U station. Okay, once Claptrap starts that, you can always score some more revolver ammo from this toilet here if you have the revolver equipped. That's pretty much a guarantee. Okay, and let's call this bad boy Gunsmoke. Meh. <laughs> Oh yeah, let's uh... Let's give him tinfoil head. And... How about all red for now? Or... I don't know. Maybe yeah, that'll work. Excellent! Now that your DNA is registered, you have the best in horrific death and dismemberment insurance! Should an unfortunate fatal incident occur, your new you will appear at the nearest station. Now we can head into the peaceful town of Firestone. Right this way. Okay, now as soon as he starts typing, you got a bit of time before he becomes available again. So let's rush over here. The only purpose we're doing this is to attempt to get some more revolver ammo, which you rarely get and to hopefully get a repeater to act as backup in case we run out of revolver ammo. Let's jump over here, jump over here on top of here, up here, over, open the red chest. And we got a repeater, great. So we have backup. Now we're going to try to get the Relentless Challenge. Let's get five kills with no more than seven seconds between each kill. Don't worry about it if you can't get it the first time. You really don't want Didn't get it, that's okay. It's a lot easier to get it on the second batch of bandits. Oh, there's one more left. That was a doozy. Yeah, out of practice here. Okay, what's the best repeater? This guy with the scope, definitely.
that's actually a pretty good sniper rifle. I'll explain more why I'm actually considering um, a sniper rifle, even though we're focusing strictly on pistols later device. on. There may be something inside to help against those bandits. Done and done, Claptrap. Wow! That looks like it could do some damage. Okay, let's get this gate open. These controls seem to be damaged. Have no fear. I'm sure I can do it. <clears throat> this isn't working. Quick, this way. Okay, hopefully I can get some revolver ammo from this ammo box over here. Otherwise, I'll have to use the repeater. Come on, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, relentless. Five kills, no more than seven seconds between each, each kill. There we go. You can always tell when you get it when you level up. And now let's take the time to get some ammo here. Excellent. I knew you were the right choice, friend. Now go. I'll contact you again soon. Get some more revolver ammo there. Attention, citizen of Firestone! There is no cause for alarm! This new visitor has resolved the problem! Well, shoot. I thought I was a goner that time. Damn bandits won't leave us alone. Had to lock the place up tight. I'll let you in. Come on! Damn it! Blasted circuits are on the fritz again. Give it a go from the switch out there, would you? Now that you've selected a mission, you will notice that a new icon has appeared on your heads-up display. That's a waypoint. The waypoint will tell you where you need to go, depending on what mission is currently active in your mission log. Thanks for opening her up again. The name's Zed. The name is Gunsmoke. Okay, so we now have the Skags at the Gate mission. As soon as we complete this mission, we can go on our million dollar power star. Now that we're done with all that, please follow me and I'll open the gate for you. Okay, four bandits we have to kill here. One always comes over the fence right here. We can ambush him as he as he comes over. And go oh yeah. Go oh yeah. Looks like he got under nine toes skin. Don't worry, he'll get what's coming to him. You did it! I knew you were the right You're the what now? You did it! I knew you were the right choice. Oh, the poor little robot needs our help. Would you kindly give him a hand? Okay, the game got kind of glitched out there. Okay, so we got this mission. Hook this up, turn it in, and let's see if we can get the skags activated by taking a pot shot at that skag holder. That's two. Good as new, I think. Am I leaking? He seems to be okay. Three. Now is the time to get moving. Four. And play your part in the journey to come. That's it. Turn in the mission. I'll see you in a few. What do you need? At this point, the fast you know travel. Thingy will allow us to go to the other DLC. So let's go to T Bone Junction and do what they call a million dollar power start. This is a very high level DLC, the General Knox DLC. But the thing is, all weapons that you collect in here um, 
will be worth a lot of money. You are late. We must speak immediately, but I'm afraid for my own security, and therefore you must jump through a hoop or two. Talk to the mechanic. He knows where to find me. And a word of caution. Don't touch him if you ever want to eat with your hands again. Okay, now these levels, uh, these missions rather, I succeed rated level 35. That's when the general knocks DLC. You can first start at around level 35. Rated impossible, but the first few missions you do with Scooter, you can actually do right now because it's just a basic step and fetch it. There's only one part that's really dangerous and you can usually get it done no problem. So let's do that and we'll level up. And for now, What I should do is hang on to this and sell this. Sell all these. Even this. Um, tell you what. Let's quickly go over to the Underdome and stash that in the bank. My. There you go. All right, now there's four weapon chests that we can loot in the T-Bone Junction, which will yield a lot of really high value weapons. And we can sell them and make a ton of money. Plus we could do the scooter, a couple scooter missions with her, which are worth a lot of XP. Um, Everyone was screaming at me for missing these uh, these lockers here. See, that's why I skipped them. Because <laughs> you normally... Off you, oh, look at this. Okay. Anyways, I don't normally include that as part of my weapons run, which I'm about to show you. So I'll be skipping that, but I do know about it. You can, you can include it. Okay, over here, beside the bounty board, Jump on top of the mailbox, jump over here, jump up here, and weapon crate number one. Now, one thing that's going to differ from my normal million dollar power, so here's another thing everybody was telling me I forgot. This is worth it because there's always something in the middle locker. Um, one thing that's going to differ from my normal million dollar power start is any pistols that we come across, we're going to screen and see if we can actually use them at level 31 or level 34 and then stash them in the bank like I just did. So instead of just automatically selling everything, we're going to screen all weapons for good usable pistols. And skip that. Turn in the first scooter mission, we have to collect some parts. Okay, so we have a new scooter mission. Boost the monster, collect these three parts. Two parts are easy, one part may be a little difficult, and if it turns out to be as such, right. I'll show you another hey, way to get it. What I need is an X372 supercharger, but not the 373. There's recall on that thing on account of people burning live and shit. Also, a big old tank of nitrous and one of them fancy exhaust booger things. I don't even know what it does, man. Make sure you light up this new u full green. Double back here. Go off the short one, jump down here, and here is weapon chest number two. Go over here, jump down to this catwalk, turn to the left and get the first part. Then you can just oh, jump over the side. Jesus, titty, cinnamon, that is a monster! That's gonna be sweet! Smoking Jesus, cinnamon, titty. And this will respawn you here, there's no death death tax for simply, simply jumping over the side. Swing on around here. So you're gonna swing around there. That's where we got the first weapon chest, or the second weapon chest. First weapon chest was over here. Swing around the curve. This second part you can get no problem. It's just getting away that's gonna be a little hairy. So we're gonna rush in and rush out. A rocket's gonna scream by us, but it usually misses. 
grab the part, turn around, well, shoot, rock looks a like screen the spy, seat's gonna have to go bye -bye to fit that bad boy hang left there. here and go straight I'll up the hill as quick as you can. Right now. now some super high level enemies are going to chase you, you can see it on the radar right now. They may kill you as you're approaching this third part. If they do, don't worry about it, there's another way to get it. Knock it down, grab it, grab it, and we're out of here. Quit the game so we can get back to Scooter real quick. And now, we're going to start looting from the beginning. Open all these containers so we can have a chance to complete the what's in here challenge. Okay, sell everything. Rinse, repeat. Check these lockers one more time, but normally I don't do this. And that's why. Okay, so that's the last time I'm doing this. There are new missions available on the T-Bone Junction Bounty Board. Seems like you either get a weapon in the lockers or a weapon in the dumpster. I'm wondering if that holds true. And let's just hit up these missions here to get Claptrap to shut up. And... Mailbox. First weapon chest. No pistols. If you got killed, if you went in there, got the second part, came out here and started racing up the hill and those high level enemies just, just totally wasted you, it, you know, like completely wasted you and killed you, you may now find it really difficult to get to the third part by going this route. Instead, go up here, along here and take the elevator. It may go down first, but just stay on the elevator and eventually go up to the top and then you can just go over here and get the third part no problem. Then those bad guys will be way down there. They won't see you. Then you can just take the same route back. Alright, so that's what happens if that happens. For now, let's, get, let's go back to Scooter. Hey, one of them crimson bucket sluts did a number on my hand trying to get information on your skin. And we leveled up already. I didn't tell him nothing. Oh, Marcos here. Let's put all the parts in here. I've got an opportunity for you. Come see me at my place Hit that in T-Bone Junction. Hanging with Moxie to join the Fathoms. Grab one of those mobs and we level up again. And that's the extent of all the missions that we can do now um, in this DLC. But we can still complete a challenge. This challenge right here earned one million dollars. This is worth a whopping five thousand XP. And this challenge too, $250,000. So that's like 7,000 XP right there. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, I'm gonna show you like the, the run I do. Get a vehicle, we've already collected one. Sorry, I just can't stand trying to compete with the NPC blathering. Okay, take your vehicle, come up here, make sure you light up that new U-Pole green. 
going out here. Jump off the short one, not the long one. Always jump off the short one and you'll land perfectly right beside this weapon chest here. Grab these two weapons. You're going to screen them for pistols. Go down here. Over here, up these stairs, and here's the third weapon chest. Continue to open the cash boxes. No pistols. Check these lockers. And there we go, we just completed the what's in here challenge. So we no longer have to open um, cash boxes. Jump over the side. You won't get a death tax doing this, don't ask me why. This will respawn you right by the green pole, the green new you pole, right beside your vehicle, conveniently enough. And go around the corner. Hit the turbo boost as soon as you get around the corner. Jam right into this pole, you to stop quickly. Go down here. And here's the fourth chest. Grab those, screen them for uh, pistols that you may want to keep, and quit the game. This will reset everything. And now I'll show you the whole run from start to finish using the vehicle. This you don't have to open up anymore because you've already completed the what's in here challenge. So to save time, just pass by here. Family Sell everything. Sure this is how you're going to make money. Sell it all off except for any pistols that you think might be useful. And then rinse and repeat. This will be the first time we're doing the run um, without having to do anything to do with screws oh, missions. Here. I've got an opportunity for you. Come see me at my place in T-Bone Junction. Top of the mailbox. Jump across here. Jump across here. Weapon chest number one. Middle locker. Sometimes other lockers. You should sell off here just to make sure you don't get overloaded. Going after the vault. Even if you only have a few, sell them off. And I just completed the Money It Buys Happiness Challenge. That's 2,000 XP there. Grab a vehicle. Go up the hill. Light up the pole green. Turn back. Jump off the short one. Weapon chest number two. Grab those bad boys. Weapon chest number three. And we just completed the ooh shiny challenge. That's where you open up five red chests. Jump over the side, respawn at the green pole. Here you can choose to stop off at Marcus's and quickly get a mission to get him to shut up. This is kind of risky though because the enemies, those really high level enemies are around, they may, uh, well, you know, kill you. <laughs> Turbo boost up the hill, jam into the pole to do a quick stop. Some players like to skip this chest. It really depends on, you know, <laughs> your timing. I like to do it though. And that's it. That's the complete run. Now we're going to continue grinding through this run until we reach $1 million by selling off weapons. And at this point, I'm going to hand on the mic over to MC Dub Slack, who is going to give a complete explanation of what this walkthrough 
is all about is all about rather all right so mc dub slack take it away all right mc dub slack here this commentary is dubbed over the gameplay um this is my mordecai pistolero build doing all the dlcs and optimize to avoid the dlc leveling problem what's the dlc leveling problem slack the dlc leveling problem is basically two problems that happen when you try to work the dlcs into your playthrough one run of borderlands two of the, one of two things can happen one is you are completely way over levels coming out of the dlc and another problem is you are under levels going into the dlc which makes it kind of difficult to work all the dlcs into the same character run um the claptrap new robot revolution dlc and the zombie island of dr ned dlcs scale with your current level but it's not exactly your current level that they're scaled with but the level of your current story mission that's very important that's a very important distinction. So if you're trying to use either of these DLCs to level up, you have to take them on at just the right time. For example, um, the Janus Town series of missions that starts around level 24, level 25. Um, if you push through those missions until you reach Janus Town cleaning up your mess, at that point, you'll have to kill Taylor Cobb and that mission is rated at level 29 and typically what happens is you arrive at that, that mission and you're only around level 25 level 26 so um, what you normally do is do a whole bunch of side missions to level up and then you can finally take on the Taylor Cobb mission but if you get the bright idea to you know to take on a DLC instead and use that to level up it won't work because what happens is for example if you take on the zombie island of Dr. Ned DLC all the missions in the DLC will be rated at around level 30 and they'll be rated as impossible and basically they are impossible. You won't be able to do them. Conversely, if you're playing along the main game and you're doing a whole bunch of side missions and um, your current level is a couple of levels, couple of three levels above the level of your current story mission, if you decide at any particular point to take on a DLC, it will be rated a couple levels below your current level, which is fine, you know, make it easy to run to the DLC. But by the time you finish the DLC, your level will be way, way above the level of the current story mission in the main game. So at this point, you'll be over leveled and you'll be forced to plow through a bunch of story missions, killing platoons of enemies worth only one XP each, which is a, a real grind that you don't want to do you know it just becomes kind of pointless and redundant to even do the story missions you know if you're not even earning any um, appreciable XP from all the enemies you're killing so those are the two issues that we want to avoid um, originally I wanted to do walkthroughs of all the DLCs using separate characters I wanted to start a new game for each DLC and take on the DLC as soon as humanly possible I've since changed my mind and decided as a personal project to take on all the DLCs using the same character, but plot an optimal course through the game so that I'm not too overleveled or too underleveled as I previously just described. And after some extensive experimentation, I finally got it down. What we're going to do is we're going to take on the Claptrap DLC at level 17. but. We're going to speed run through it since I've already done a walkthrough of the Claptrap DLC. We're going to speed run through the Claptrap DLC and this will bring us out and back into the main game around level 19 instead of level 22 if we ran through the whole Claptrap DLC normally. Okay, So at level 19 we'll be able to open up the Hyperion gift shop and get a whole bunch of fantastic kick-ass weapons and at that point um, we'll be perfectly leveled to take on Sledge and then move on into the Dahl Headlands and then we can continue through the main game doing story missions only um, that's Lucky, Mad Mel, the Crazy Earl missions and finally Krom. Once we get to the Krom mission which I believe is called the next piece it's typically around the level 25 and that mission is rated at, I believe at level 25. At that point before we turn in the Krom mission we'll start the Zombie Island DLC and use that to level up to around level 30 because at that point the main mission line takes a big difficulty spike as I previously previously described the Janus Town series of missions it jumps from level 25 to level 27 and all of a sudden you're at level 29 and you're way under leveled and you need, need to find some way to level up 
So that's what we're going to use to level up is the Zombie Island DLC at that point. But we have to take it on while the Crow mission is on board, not after we turn it in. Okay. So after that, um, we can go on, complete the Zombie Island DLC, and we should pop out of that around level 30. It really depends on how much you know enemy, how many enemies we kill in the DLC, and then we can continue on to complete the main game and try to kill as many enemies as possible, complete the main game around level 32, level 33, at which point we'll be in a great position to take on the General Knox DLC on playthrough 1. And maybe I might throw in the Mad Moxie's Underdome DLC. Um, I'm going to leave that optional. Also, I'm going to leave it optional exactly when to take on the General Knox DLC. Um, I might do it in playthrough 1. Or I might do it in playthrough two if there's still a lot of interest in this walkthrough. So, you know, if this still, if this walkthrough is still like going strong, you know, and there's a lot of support and and um, a lot of views and whatnot, I'll hold off uh, the General Knox DLC until playthrough two. At which point we'll have to take it on around level 50. Okay, so that is the grand plan. Um, just to recap, um, Claptrap DLC speed run at level 17. Zombie Island DLC at level 25 right after killing Krom and a playthrough one General Knox DLC at level 33 or 34. Now all the way through this we're going to be creating a Mordecai Pistolero build using only pistols, repeaters and revolvers. And this is not a role-playing agenda. We're not just doing this just for fun. I'm doing this for the strategic purpose of building up a very high pistol proficiency which adds a lot of excellent bonuses to your gameplay. All right, um, so that's about it. That's the whole gist of this walkthrough. That's what it's all about. And um, I'm gonna pass the mic on back to Live Slack, who is just about to complete his million dollar power start. I've kind of skipped ahead to um, avoid some of the grind. How you doing down there, Live Slack? And there we go, we have just completed the Rich Get Richer Challenge. We now have one million dollars. We're at level eight already. So that's the million dollar power start. Um, there were some pistols to look over, but none of the revolvers that I saw had a scope, so I rejected them all. And none of the repeaters that I saw um, were really noteworthy. So that's it, we're off to a good start. Let's go back, uh, no, while we're here, Let's fill up an ammo all the way across the board. Listen to this. <laughs> and let's buy three upgrades in particular. We can buy really high grade upgrades here in T-Bone Junction. For our Mordecai Pistolero build, we're going to buy the Revolver SDU. the repeater SDU and the grenade SDU just those three and it still leaves us with 400,000 cash to play around with and that's it let's go back to Firestone and continue the main mission and that is gonna pick up next video I wanna thank you all very much for watching see you next video Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, alright? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.